uh, get your communion together. If you don't have communion at your house, it's okay to use pancakes and milk. It's okay to use what, biscuits and, and coffee. Whatever you have, you can take communion with that. But we will be doing that at the end of the service. So we're very, very excited about today's message. And, you know, we've been doing this series on as he is, so are we in this world. How many of you are getting the revelation of that? As he is, well, not many. How many of you are getting the revelation of that? There we go. All right. That's what the word that, says. <clears throat> the word says, as he is, talking about Jesus, talking about the Father, as he is real time, so are we in this world real time. Not in the sweet by and by. We're talking about now. Even if some people call it the nasty now and now. <laughs> We're not worried about that. Because as he is, that's the way we are. Divine health, that's the way we are. Prosperous, that's the way we are. All these things are blessings that came forth from the finished work of the cross. So you can go and look online yes. and, and look at the ones that we've done prior to today. We did uh, compassion. We actually did three sermons on compassion. And we did one on peace. And now, you know, it's important for us to understand mercy. Next week, we're going to be doing uh, our God of all grace, but today we're doing mercy. You know, it's important that we understand mercy before we can receive grace. Yeah. We have to understand what mercy is. You know, mercy is not getting what you rightfully deserve in your sinful state that you would be punished for your sins. Uh, but that's what it should be, that you would be punished for your sins. But mercy is you not getting that, mm -hmm. that you aren't getting what you rightfully deserve. And grace is you getting what you haven't earned. That's right. It's a gift from the Lord that he provided through uh, the, the dying on the cross for our sins. And so what we want to do is break this down today and mercy and help you understand how you apply what you learn from the Lord to, to utilize mercy in your own lives with others. Amen. So let's start in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, God, that's, that's enough right there. God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he had loved us, even when, we're, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. Now, this is how, by grace, you have been saved. And raised them together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. Not just grace, but the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, not of yourself. You can't work salvation. You can't work yourself into salvation. You know, it's, it's not the, 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 the good person thing. No, it's accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That is the gift of God, not of your works, lest anyone should boast. So we need to understand that part so we can go on to the rest. All right, look at, uh, let's look at Romans 3.21, please. <clears throat> but now the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed. The right standing that we have from God, apart from the law, is revealed. Being witnessed by the law and prophets. And that righteousness came through Jesus. Even the righteousness of God, through faith in Jesus Christ, to all and on all who believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Being justified freely, yeah. being justified freely yeah. by His grace. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a perpetuation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness. Because in his forbearance, God has passed over the sins that were previous, previously committed to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness. That he might be just, that God might be just, and at the same time the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. All right. Let me tell you a little story here. Let's look at first. Before we read Romans 6, 23. There was this judge. And this judge. 
had a friend. And this friend was like a fishing buddy to this judge. And this judge had a case come before him, and it turned out to be his fishing buddy. And his fishing buddy thought, oh, this is going to go well. This is going to go good. I'm sure my fishing buddy is going to uh, pull some strings, do some things, and be real lenient on me or let me off or whatever. And so as the, as the rest of the uh, trial went forth, proceedings went forth, his, the, the judge finally came down at the end and said, guilty as charged. Guilty as charged. And there was going to be this really hefty fine for what his fishing buddy friend had done. But he up, uphold, upheld the letter of the law. He didn't cut any slack. He didn't do anything else, but he did that. But the next thing you know, the judge came off the, uh, out of his seat and came down from the podium. He took off his judge robes and went over to the window at the, at the police department and paid the fine, the hefty, hefty fine that was owed because of the crime that was committed, the sin, the crime. The judge took off what he had judge garments. He had judgely, I should say, garments. And he had the power. He had the authority. He had the law on his side. And yet he did not break the law. He did not say, Less, oh, <clears throat> not guilty. Because that would have been wrong, because the guy was guilty. But when it was over with, he took off his robes, laid them aside, and went down and paid this hefty fine for his fishing buddy. Y'all get the, the picture here? Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. The gift of God. Everybody say gift. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so going back to the judge story, I mean, that was a gift. This was a very hefty fine, very hefty fine for this fishing buddy to have to pay. And the judge took himself out of his, his of where the, he rightfully had that position, removed his, all of his judge garments and robes and everything else and went down and paid in full. He didn't have to do that. That was mercy and grace in operation. Amen. You know, think about that, that fishing buddy. Can you imagine how angry he probably was? How dare him? That's my friend. Why wouldn't he do this for me? Yes. Why wouldn't he do this for me? Why wouldn't he declare me Why not guilty? Why wouldn't he declare me not guilty? No, the law had to be fulfilled. That's right. Right? That's right. You know what? Jesus didn't do away with the law. He what? He fulfilled, fulfilled the, the law. law. There he is no way on it. earth that we could have. Mm -hmm. There was there was so many laws. What, what does the Bible say? That if you have committed yeah, if you offend, against one, if you offend, if you offend one, one point of the law, you're guilty of breaking the entire law. That means if you go 66 on a 65-mile zone, You've already broken the law. You can't. There is no way. The law was never intended for you to keep. It was to be a schoolmaster for you to learn how important it was. And what's the difference? To have a savior. Right and wrong. What things are That's right, right and wrong. But can you imagine then what that same fishing buddy thought once his friend went, after he fussed at him, went and paid the fine for him? Oh, my goodness. He said, how can I ever repay you? He said, you, have, you owe me nothing. You owe me nothing. Uh, that was pretty powerful. But let's look, at, let's look at Matthew 9, 9 through 13. And we're going to talk about Matthew, the tax collector. As Jesus passed, we start at verse 9. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, follow me. So he arose and he followed him. I mean, I want you to think about it, the mercy the Lord had in the disciples he chose. I mean, that alone is mercy. 
Not any of them were qualified to be a disciple. None of them. And he said, now it happened as Jesus sat at the table in the house that behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. Now look at the Pharisees. The religious group. Yeah, the holy of the thou art. The ones that crucified Christ. Yeah. He said, and when the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with the tax collectors and the sinners? You can imagine them. You know, this little, <laughs> you know. Little attitude. Attitude. Little tude there, you, you know. know. Like, they, like they know it all. Yeah. And they're judging. What does the Bible say about judging? Judge not lest you be, you be judged. judged. So here they are. So what is he doing? Eating with the tax collectors and the sinners. How filthy. How disgusting. When Jesus heard that, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. Mercy. Mercy. This is what this was, mercy. Yes. In Romans 5, 8. But God commended his love toward us. In that while we were yet sinners, filthy dogs, Christ died for us. Because he loved us so much, he literally gave up his life. This is why we're going to be taking communion at the end of the service. When you think about all that he did and the price that he paid. You remember when we were talking about peace last week. And we were talking about how he... he took it the, the, it says the chastisement of our peace was upon him chastisement means they took and they it was a flogging and a beating where they took that metal ball with the the, the spikes, spikes yeah. and they flung it at him and ripped out his flesh mm -hmm. this is what he did for us you talk about mercy this is what he did for us he bore stripes on his back for our healing he shed his blood one drop would have been enough but you know what? He did that even before he went to the cross. He shed blood when he went before the Lord. When he was praying before the Lord, he said, and his soul began to speak out to him. You know, you are spirit, soul, and body. It wasn't a piece of cake for Jesus to do this. He went and he said, Lord, if you will, let this cup pass from me. Let this cup pass from me. I think he was thinking, man, I really don't want to do this. Who would? But he said, Lord, nevertheless, Father, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Mm -hmm. Mercy, with a capital M. Mercy, big time. And from that point on, he went on, not saying it was easy, but he did it for you, and he did it for me in our sinful state. Amen? So let's look at Romans 8. Romans 8, look at verse 1, 1 through 6. <clears throat> there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it That's was right. weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Verse 6, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is both life and what? Peace. You know, last week we talked about peace last week. To be Spiritually minded is life, John 10, 10, 
The thief comes not but to kill, to steal, and destroy. But I have come to give you life. It didn't stop right there. I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. So to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and life more abundantly and peace, the peace of God which passes all understanding. You know, in Sandra's testimony, you think about it, at the beginning, she was thinking of self. And she literally was thinking, and I'm sure she would admit to this, carnally, carnally minded. But then, as she spent time with the Lord, yes. then she got spiritually minded, and it produced peace and life. Yes. And even she was able to minister to people in the midst where of she it. was. Yes. Yeah. So, y'all, I'm telling you, this is, this is powerful. If you'll really take a hold of this sermon today, Hebrews 8, 12, it says, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. This is Jesus. He said, I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. And look at this. And their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. As though it never happened. Now, he didn't, he didn't forget he didn't forget. He chose not to remember That's right. our sinful That's state. Right. Oh. He chose not to remember. A purposeful act. Not a forgetful act. A purposeful act. On purpose, he did it. Chose so let's, let's go on and further in Hebrews. In Hebrews 10, 11, it says, And every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. Those religious acts didn't take away sins. They couldn't take away That's sins. Right. But this man... Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, that was it. Once for all, mm -hmm. past, present, and future. Yes. He took care of it. That's right. Before you were ever even born into this sinful state. That's right. He already took care of it. Now all you have to do is receive it. Mm hmm it doesn't mean receive that because he gift. took care of it back then, two thousand years ago, that you're born into that, you, that you're not a sinner. You're born as a sinner. For all have sinned and fall short right. of God's glory. But he paid the price so that then what you have to do is just say, Lord, I receive you as my Savior. Mm -hmm. I receive you as my Savior. That's it. It's a free gift. You just have to accept it. Oh, what happened to my thing here? Where am I? My, my computer just went on down the... What verse are we on? Right there before. Okay, Hebrews 10, 11. Yep. All right, I've got too many scriptures here. And every priest stand ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifice, which can never take away sin. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, oh, he sat down at the right hand of God. And from that time, waiting till his enemies are made his footstool, for by one offering, now look at this, he hath perfected. He's perfected us. Mm -hmm. He's cleansed us. Our spirit man is completely perfect. An entire wanting nothing right now. It said, um, from this time on, let's say, for by one offering he hath perfected forever. Who? Those who are sanctified. Yes. The New King James says are being sanctified, but the King James says who are sanctified. You yes. are already sanctified. Those, we are perfected forever. We, we're, we've been sanctified by Jesus who sanctifies. He was the sanctifier. But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us after he has said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them. And he said he would never break his covenant. His covenant he would never break. That that came forth from his mouth. And he said, I will make them, after those days says the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds I will write them. And he added again, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Yeah. Amen. No Amen. more. Amen. He Good. washed it all away. That one drop of blood, if that's all it was. You know, when he went before the Father and he's sweating drops of blood, that would have been enough. But he went to the cross and he shed so much blood and bore stripes. Mercy. Mercy. He had that mercy. Okay, now let's go and look at an Old Testament example. Of Old mercy. Testament example is Genesis. Look at Genesis 39, verse 21. We're talking about Joseph here. But the Lord was with Joseph. 
Now, how many of you know it's in the natural, it doesn't look like the Lord was with Joseph. I mean, he was thrown into a pit by his brothers, left to That's die. Right. Ishmaelite traders came by. They, they sold Joseph to the Ishmaelite traders, ended up at Potiphar's house, and said, but the, and he, of course, he was put out on a, a block and auctioned and everything else, probably was stripped naked and, and, uh, and degraded and all this kind of stuff. And then the word says, but the Lord was with Joseph. How many of you know things like that don't define whether the Lord is with you or not? That the Lord was with Joseph. I mean, he didn't live inside of Joseph like, you know, the Spirit of God lives in us now because the Holy Spirit back then would come and, you know, and light on somebody and be on somebody and then the Spirit would leave, you know, come and go. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him what? Mercy. And gave him favor. Favor is another, a synonym of favor is grace. In the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison, by the time he got to the prison, when after being falsely accused by Potiphar's wife. So he, but, but there again, God made him, put him in charge of the prison. Now, what did Joseph know about running a prison? <laughs> did, he, did he study prisonology in co college or anything? No, he did not. He hadn't had one day of, of on-the-job training. He just, next thing you know, he's got the handle of the books. He's doing everything. He's just, you know, he's, he's just in charge of the HR department, everything. HR department. <laughs> and, and he's running this prison, but he's running it by the power of God. Amen. He didn't have to know. Because the Lord was his wisdom. The Lord was his knowledge. God put him there. In fact, Potiphar, are you kidding me? If, it wasn't, if, if the, what he, Joseph was accused of, he would have ended up in any prison, then he would not have been in the king's prison. And because, right. because it was Potiphar, it ended up being the, the king's prison, and yet he was put in charge, and we know what happened as far as him uh, 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 giving the, the interpretation of these dreams and stuff. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hands all the prisoners that were in the prison and whatever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under the hand because the Lord was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made to prosper. How many of you have the Lord with you? Amen. Right now? How many of you have the Lord in you? Amen. Does your Bible say, I will never leave you nor forsake you. It doesn't matter if you're at the bottom of a swimming pool. It doesn't matter if you're on top of a skyscraper or a mountain. He's always with you. Amen. And he said, I will never leave you for one millisecond, and I'll never for forsake you. And he made everything that Joseph did prosper. Everything. everything. And everything. he ended up being in the right prison to end up later becoming... Second in command of all of right, Egypt. right to interpret the dreams and then then get brought before Potiphar. You all know the story. Interpret, uh, but Potiphar's dreams, and then God spoke through Potiphar and said, "I'm gonna make you number two of Israel. I mean of Egypt. I'm gonna make you the number two man of Egypt." Pharaoh. Pharaoh said that. Pharaoh said, "Put that in in fact, uh, God put that in Pharaoh's heart." Amen. That's what he, this was a journey. This was a plan. This didn't just happen. This was laid out by the Lord. And he said, except you approve it, there's none greater than me in Egypt. And at that time, Egypt was the greatest country on the face of the earth. And Joseph, number two, from the prison to the palace all in one day. That's the kind of God we serve. Amen. Thank but you. But you know, Lord. even Joseph, back when the cupbearer went back to the king, I mean to Pharaoh, and he was doing his job again. When he left, Joseph said, remember, remember me. me. And in fact, in that verse, he uses the word me three times. Yeah. So Joseph's focus was on me. me. It wasn't on anything else. For, don't forget me. Remember me when you come before Pharaoh. Yes. Don't forget me. And he said it three times. Mm -hmm. Two more years went by. That's right. And Joseph had some thinking to do. Right, he had to get some me out of him. Some me out of him, that's right. Some little me <laughs> cropped up in there, you know. Joseph hadn't done very much meing 
but he he was doing some me and right there, which right. was so important because if God had promoted him right then, he hadn't been in there two more years. Ready. He wouldn't have been marinated and ready. He would have probably killed his brothers when he got in the hands that, well, on them. You know what? That's true. Yeah. I never even, yeah. He wouldn't have had any mercy He wouldn't on have them. any mercy. But look he at wouldn't the, have any grace. Wow, the, that is so cool. He wouldn't be weeping when they look showed up. Look how much up. mercy he had on his own family and his brothers. And his, killing. Y'all, kill, that is a serious example of mercy right Israel there. Israel sons. I mean, uh, that's you right. can't be. But oh, that, my goodness. But, that, but there what an again, amazing story. He had t- two years that's more right. to think about it and to meditate and to hear God's voice. And when that happened, when he came before Pharaoh, yeah. And Pharaoh asked him to interpret the dreams. Mm-hmm. You know what Joseph said in yes, that? Yes, what he He said, it's not, not in me, me but, but the God, Lord, Lord God will, will, will give you the interpretation. He'll give you the interpretation. Right. It's not in me. Mm-mm. So the me was out of him. That's right. So by then, because the me was out of him, then when it was time to deal with his brothers, he was able to do it with mercy. That's right. Oh, and, that and is love. so powerful. Motivated by love. Wow, yes. that's the best story. That is so cool. All right, um, let's look at Psalms 25 in verse 10. It says, all the path, all the path. All, everybody say all. All, all the paths of the Lord are mercy, mercy and, and truth. truth. Mercy and truth to such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. You know, all the Lord wants is for us just to serve him. Yes. All his promises are yes and amen for yes. those who will just make him Lord. All of them, all of them. In Matthew 5, 7, it says, now this is, this is what we can learn from Joseph. Or the judge that went down that the story that Van told and paid buddy. for his fishing buddy. Yeah. Matthew 5, 7 says, Blessed are who? The, the merciful, merciful. For what? They shall obtain mercy. That's right. Sowing and reaping. That is right. sowing and reaping. Yeah. How many of you want to obtain mercy? How many of you know there are times in your life when somebody has to have mercy on you? Oh, Lord have mercy. Let's don't even go there for some of those stories. I'm sure there's quite a few. Quite a few. But we have to... Uh, we have to Learn that as he is, that's who we are in this world, and we're to show mercy. We're to show mercy. You know, when we were downtown, and people would come in off the street, and they might be street walkers or, or who knows what. It could be they could be anything. And when they walked in that door, and they didn't know Jesus, there's no telling how they would be dressed. There's no telling what they would be doing. They might be outside the door drinking and smoking and, and, and selling drugs. We don't know. We, well, we do know because we went out and picked up a lot of needles and different things. And, and we, we, we knew these things that were happening. But when they would walk in the door, we showed them mercy. We went and hugged on them and loved on them and showed them that we cared. So then when they get saved, you know, a lot of people that would go and see something like that, they'd want to say, well, let's help, let's help them find Jesus. Well, you know what? After they find Jesus and they serve Jesus, then the next week they come in and they're still dressed the same way, doing the same things. You still better show mercy. That's right. You That's don't right. come and say, well, they're saved now. They ought to be changed. No. No, we are spirit, soul, and body. Mm-hmm. Your, your body and your, your soulish realm, man, it takes some... You, you have to train it and, and work with it. And you know what I'm saying? You have to show them the same mercy. You show them the same love. Yes. How many of you know that? So when you're born again, your spirit is perfect, but your soul is not. And your soul has to come, start to come in line with your spirit. And your spirit can take dominion over your soulless realm. But I mean, it doesn't happen overnight. No. It doesn't have to, it's a process. Proverbs 3, Proverbs 3, 3, let not, I love this right here, 3 through 8, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so, in doing so, is what it's saying, you will find favor and high esteem in the sight of not only God. God, but man. God, God gives you favor with him, but he also gives you favor with man. Wow, such a deal. And it says, verse 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart 
and don't lean on your own understanding in all of your ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from what? Evil. Evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Ooh, what a promise. Yeah. Amen. In Psalms 23, 6, it says, Surely goodness and what? Mercy, Mercy shall follow me all, all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yes. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all every day. His mercies are new every, every day. day. Yeah. Every day. Yes. Amen. Okay. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 22. Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness, The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Let's read this one, read this one more. In 1 Peter 1, 3 through 9, our heavenly inheritance, it said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant, everybody say abundant, abundant mercy, yes. abundant mercy yes. has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Christ, of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last day in this you greatly rejoice though for now a little while if need be you have been grieved by various trials that the genuineness of your faith being more precious than gold that perishes though it be tested by fire may be found to praise and honor and glory through the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith and the salvation of your soul, beginning with mercy, beginning with abundant mercy, y'all. Hallelujah. Let me, let me share one of the greatest examples of uh, New Testament biblical uh, mercy here. And I love it. I know most of you, know, all, of you all of you know this story, but look at uh, Luke. And we recently did a we, sermon we on this. We did recently do a sermon on this. But Luke 10, verse 25. And there's so much power in here. And Jesus really does it so lovingly. So, so incredibly. You know, in fact, there's a scripture that talks about the rich young ruler. This is not, I'm not talking about the rich young ruler, but when the rich young ruler said, you know, he, he went away sad, you know, what, what must I do to inherit the kingdom? And, and God went on, you know, uh, the, uh, they told him, this is what you need to do. Jesus said, this is what you need to do. And it, <clears throat> and it says, and he went away exceedingly sad because he had great riches. And then the word, and then right after that, and it said, and Jesus loved him. And Jesus loved him. Because Jesus understood that riches actually had <clears throat> had him instead of him having riches. And see, all the Lord wanted yes. to do was to have mercy on the poor. That's right. But he wasn't willing to do that. That's very sad. So here in Luke 10, verse 25, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, Well, what is written in the law? What is your reading of it? So he answered and said, well, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength and all, with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you, Jesus said, you've answered rightly. Now do this and you will live. But this lawyer wanting to justify himself said to Jesus, get a little nitpicky here, says, <laughs> thought he'd trap him. And who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jer Jerusalem to Jericho, fell among thieves, who stripped him of the cl his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. 
Now, by chance, a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain, certain Samaritan, which shouldn't even be doing in the, in the, in the realm of that day, would, would normally walk by on the other side also. But a certain Samaritan, Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. Remember, we talked about compassion weeks ago. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And the next day when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave, two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to him who fell among thieves? I mean, this ought to be a no-brainer. And he said, uh, duh. He who showed him showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. Take those same principles that this good Samaritan, Samaritan did, and you go and live it, and you'll know who your neighbor is. You'll know who your neighbor is because you'll have many neighbors that you reach out to with mercy. Because they'll be put across your path and you'll have plenty of opportunities to show brotherly love and to demonstrate the love of Jesus. Now, Regina's got a personal example about uh, in her lineage of of, of really showing amazing. Her, Her daddy wrote a book a few years ago called The Sky Pilot. The Sky Pilot. Her daddy was... A, had started, what, four Assembly of God churches? Is that right? Yes. Pioneered four Assembly of God churches, and after a period of years would turn each one over to the Assemblies of God. I think one was in Memphis. It's uh, two or three in Peachtree City. Or how many? Two, two, and then one in Kansas One City, in Kansas right. City. And he also was a TWA, Trans World Airlines, captain 747 for, what, I believe it's right, 28 years. And he wrote this book, and it's really, really a good book, but he writes it from the standpoint of how God was involved in all of this and how God was leading him. So go ahead, baby. And so I, before I read to you the story that is on the mercy that I, I want to share with you, you got a little bit of time here. My great-great-grandfather, um, on February the 23rd, 1828, Alexander Chestnut Flanders was the fourth of nine children born in the home of John R. and Nancy Sumner Flanders. Flanders, that was my great-great-grandfather, serving in the Confederate Army, Captain Chess, was reported to have been with Stonewall Jackson when Jackson died. After the war, he walked home from Virginia to establish his life again um, in Emanuel County, Georgia. Until his death on November 3rd, 1919, Grandpa Chess devoted his life to serving the Lord's Army with overwhelming enthusiasm. Until confined to a wheelchair in the last three years of his life, he served as a circuit-riding Methodist pastor. He was what we refer to today as a shouting Methodist, ready to pray for and witness to anyone needing the Lord as their Savior. Being an invalid the last years of his life uh, merely changed his role to full-time prayer warrior and interceding for God to call ministers from his seed. At the last count, About 60 of his descendants have answered the call to some form of ministry of which I am one. That's my father. Now, I want to read the story about my great-grandfather, and this is a story we want to end with. Very, very powerful story. My grandfather, Joe Flanders, that's my dad's grandfather. So my great-grandfather, Joe Flanders, had gathered his family around him for their nightly devotion. They did devotions every night. The circle covered the entire room for all nine of his children were present. After Bible reading, his strong voice was lifted towards heaven in praise and thanksgiving. And suddenly he began to pray, Lord, paralyze the hand that would harm us tonight. Immediately out of the dark, a man began to scream, help me, help me. Terror filled the house as my grandfather ran toward the voice. He found a man had been standing outside the room during the prayer, hiding behind the chimney. His hands were literally paralyzed. My grandfather had always taught his family, if your enemy hungers, give him food. What would he do now? Like many, he could have said, he had it coming to him, but with compassion. 
Grandpa Joe said, stretch out your hands, and they began to pray for him from the depths of his heart for healing. An amazing miracle took place right before his family's eyes as the healing of the hands was in progress. The greatest of all miracles was happening. The soul of a thief was born into the family of God. One miracle had turned into into two as all who had witnessed the incident stood in awe of the glory of God in their midst. Wow. That is my heritage. Y'all, let me tell you. There are people that will come to try to do you harm. Or slander you. Do anything they can to undermine you. But if you will show mercy, God can turn that around for Mm -hmm. his glory and lead these people to Jesus. As he is, so are you. Every one of you in this world right now. That same kind of healing power that went through that criminal is here today. His grace is sufficient for all of our needs, but his mercy is something he wants us to operate in for others. Man, I couldn't think of a better story In fact, Van reminded me, he said, let's tell the story of your great-grandfather. We could tell some of our own stories, but how powerful was that in the late 1800s, mid-1800s, for a man to believe God for this criminal and thief who was coming to rob them and do them harm. But because of a, see, this this teaches a lot of things. Your words have power, folks. And when he said, let the hand of the one who would cause us harm be paralyzed tonight. And immediately that man's hands were paralyzed. And he started yelping. And he started screaming, help me, help me. That man knew that he probably was going to go to jail. He didn't go to jail that night. He went to, he he, he went into the kingdom of the God. Kingdom of God. Yeah. Amen. Because a man had mercy and believed for healing, which led to salvation. Y'all, I'm telling you, every one of you in this room have that same power to heal the sick and lead them to Jesus. And that same power to extend mercy and to extend grace. Wasn't that a good story? Amen. I'm proud of my great grandfather and my great great grandfather. Yeah. That 60 people after that in my family went into the ministry. That was be- before some of the rest of us went into the ministry, so who knows how many now? We know there were seven airline pilots in our family, and all of these ministers, and my dad was both. I love you, Daddy. Proud of you. Where? There he is. I love you. So proud of you. <laughs> that camera, yeah. <laughs> but I'm telling he's you, I'm looking at here. the camera. He's no, he's not camera here. Camera number one no, he's with at, the he's red light the on. Watching. Yes, People are <laughs> turn around to see if you were here, Daddy. Yeah. But you know what, y'all? I'm telling you right now, every one of us has been called into the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. Amen. Just like Sandra was talking others. about doing down in Sarasota. She was leading people to Jesus. Absolutely. And just, you know what? And you think, well, suppose they reject me. They're not rejecting you. They're no. rejecting Jesus. But God will send somebody else around. That's right. To continue to show mercy and, to sh- and grace and to draw them in by his spirit. Don't ever stop yeah. sharing his goodness and his mercy every day. Yes. Because his mercies are new every day. That's right. Shouldn't ours be? Absolutely. New every day for others. Mm-hmm. Isn't that good? Yeah. That's good. When it's good, this was good. Amen. Man, and I'm going to say that again. If that doesn't float your boat, then what? 
Then somebody's pulled your plug. plug. That's right. Or something has pulled your plug, and then you're going to sink. But, man, I'm telling you what, y'all. Grab a hold of this. And then come back next week and hear the grace part. Man, it's going to really be good, too. The God of all grace. Yeah. But I'm telling you right now. And then the following Sunday is when our son, Javan, and Dora come back from Andrew Womack Ministries and come back to him. This will be their the only yeah. time to be yeah. able to minister here yeah. this year. So please don't miss it. That's right. Bring all your friends. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that, you know, usually Javan can't ever finish a sermon in one day. That doesn't mean that we're going to stay all afternoon no, for no. three or four portions of that sermon. <laughs> but um, don't miss it. Definitely come. I know Javan will be thrilled and Dora thrilled to, to see all of you. They miss you so much. God's doing amazing things through them. Benny Hinn had a word over Javan, called him out of thousands of people recently at, in, at, at Andrew's, Andrew's ministry. ministry yeah. And he called him out and he prayed for Javan and Dora and they went out in the spirit. And he said that that man has ministry in him, a lot of ministry in him. Which we all knew that, didn't we? So anyway, we're excited that he's coming as a guest speaker now. Javan's coming. Javan and Dora are coming as guest speakers. So, so but they've, they've been gone since January 17th. That's right. Yeah. He was going to try to come this weekend for my birthday, but he couldn't because they have to be at a conference uh, there in Colorado. Truth so, and Liberty Conference. Truth and Liberty, yeah. but they're coming next week for Van. So we're really excited to have them. They'll only be here two days, so we're just going to enjoy every bit of it that we can while they're here but we're going to go ahead and we're going to we're going to before we do the altar call um and we're we want all of you at home to get your communion elements anybody here that does not have your communion elements did everybody get communion elements if you did not please raise your hand and our ushers will make sure you get some okay we have right here and over here um that's all right all right, lift your hand high. Please if hold you your hands up high. Elements, yeah. please. We'll get them There's quite a few. So yeah. um, communion elements, we want to make sure everybody gets communion elements. Y'all, it's so important. The reason we wanted to take communion today is we want to recognize everything that Jesus did to have mercy for us and the price that he paid. What a perfect day for communion. What a perfect day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And we got plenty of time. We got 15 minutes. God is good. God is so good. We did good. And I feel like the message, I think you received it well and understood the importance of mercy. You know, I, I, I thought I would cry when I read that story. I was trying to keep myself together. But what an honor it is to have a heritage like that, of the love of Jesus. Such an honor and a privilege. But you know what? Because we're all part of the family of God, we all have that honor. That's right. Even greater, greater honor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, everybody have elements now? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. I got it. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, I'm going to read out of uh, <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter 14. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night, no coincidence, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. Give them the scripture again. This is my body. This is 1 Corinthians, out of 1 Corinthians, and it's uh, chapter 11 and verse 23. So it said, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Thank you, All right. So we're taking the bread right here. And he tells, tells us, take it and eat it, because this is my body, which is broken for you. All the beating, all the scourging, all the stripes he took on his back, just beat to a pulp. And the Bible says he was hardly even recognizable as a man, dehumanized. He didn't even look like a man, a human being. 
this is the broken body. This represents not only healing. Ooh, hallelujah. How many, how many of you like healing? Everybody, Amen. Anybody here don't like he healing? Yeah, you we like receive healing? divine health right. in our bodies well, healing right now, is Jesus the beginning name. of what this, what this is for here about this, his broken body. You're, you're also, you're entitled to divine health. Yes. Not only healing. Healing, healing leads to divine health. If you just stay, hang in there, just remembering his precious promises. Remember that he bore your pains and sorrows and sicknesses and diseases. I like to use the scripture, 1 Peter 2, 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, which is the cross. That we, being dead to sin, no longer have a sin nature. We'll have individual little sins, but that's not who we are. We'll have, we don't, he took our sin nature. Who died to sin... who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin, sin nature, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Every cold, every right. symptom, Everything. every attack on your body, everything Amen. physically, mentally, Amen. doesn't matter. Oh, well, this doesn't fit under, it's a one stop, it's one size fits all. It's encompassing. It belongs to you in your body, in your mind. You are, he wanted us to have not only healing, but to have you, divine health. Don't go and get in arguments with people about that because people will argue with you day long. Religious people will argue with you, not just not, not unbelievers. Just know it. Take that one verse right there and meditate on that one verse, 1 Peter 2, 24, and, and eat it up, chew it, swallow it, spit it, up, slosh it around your mouth, <laughs> and get it down in your heart. You've got so many others. Amen. So oh, many yeah. others. Isaiah 53. All those things. The Isaiah 53 was forward-looking, talking about by his stripes, you, are, you were healed. Amen. That's prophetic. 1 Peter 2.24 is looking in hindsight and saying, who is on stress by his life, you were healed. Amen. So if you are healed, you were healed, what are you? Healed. Healed. Lock, stop, and back. Well, I got this pain here. That He said he bore our pains Amen. and sorrows Amen. and sicknesses and diseases. So if you've got a pain, it's illegal. It's trespassing. It does not belong there. Do not settle. Do not just negotiate with it and say, well, at least I'm not blind or at least I'm not crippled. I'm no, don't, don't, don't do any of this at least stuff. Amen. Every, everything that is contrary to the word of God in your body is a lie and trespassing. Ooh, amen. And you have the authority to get yeah, rid of come it. come on, baby. That's and right. And to keep amen. it gone. Gone in Jesus' Hallelujah. name. Hallelujah. So we're going to receive right now the broken body. Because what he says here is do this in remembrance of uh, me. Yeah. Not in remembrance of, wait a minute, I, I wasn't perfect this week. Or I fouled up this week and I'm not worthy to really take communion. It's not about your worthiness. It's about his worthiness. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And he Glory said, do God. this in remembrance of me. Yes. How, how mag majestic I am. How oh, full my. of power I am. How I am the author Ooh, and the finisher hallelujah. of your faith. How I bore. I'm the one that bore your pains and sorrows and sicknesses and diseases. And I did this out of love, out of Amen. compassion. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Do this in remembrance of me. Comma, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Do this in remembrance of me. Thank so we're going to take this bread right now. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we're receiving this bread, this broken body of Jesus right now, in the name of Jesus, in remembrance of him, your son, who was willing to go through this, to go through the maligning, the beating, the the, the, the skin being ripped off, cursed, treated like a, a not even a, what an animal would be treated like. But he bore it all. He took our sins, past, present, and future. Somebody, oh, you can't, you can't get those covered. You better hope future sins are covered. 
That's the they truth. are covered. Past, yes. present, and future. He took our sin nature from us and gave us the made us the made us Hallelujah. the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You're righteous. Yeah, but I did this wrong the other day. You're still righteous. You keep yourself in mindset that you are a righteous person. You're in right standing with God because of what Jesus did. And he made you that way. You didn't earn it. It was a free gift. Thank you, Lord. We're receiving the free gift right now. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did. Your obedience to the de to to the, even to the death of the cross. We receive the broken body right now in remembrance of you and you only. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and receive the bread. Amen. Verse 25 says, In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, say, supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. There's power in the blood. Oh, glory. Glory. All it would have taken was one drop of blood from Jesus to be shed for us. He had so much overkill, it's not even funny. His blood was drained out of him practically because he was beaten and scourged and, and put up on the cross Probably. and nails in his hands and everything at his feet. He, he emptied himself out. And the blood, in the blood, there's salvation in the blood. Like I said, all you needed was one drop. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So much overkill. There's pr protection in the blood. There's deliverance in the blood. There's, pr there's provision in the blood. There's the healing Ooh, and divine health in the blood. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. We know the power. There can be no remission of sin without shed blood. And not the blood of bulls and goats any longer. Because we have, we, we, that had to be done every year. And even then it just covered sin up. But now our sins, he said, your sins and lawless deeds, I will remember no more. Hallelujah. And he took it all. He took, gave us his salvation. He gave us himself. He gave us his name to use in Thank the name you, of Lord. Jesus. There's power in that name. Hallelujah. There's salvation in that name. Thank you, and Lord. Father, we just honor you and thank you for sending and loving us so much to send Jesus to give us all these things, to give us everything that pertains to life and to godliness. We receive it right now with joy and gladness as we receive the blood. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And Lord, thank we just Jesus. thank you for those elements, Lord, to, with the, every part of our body and any part of our body that may need healing or may need anything inside of it or our Thank mind, you, whatever is being ministered to right now in the mighty name. Thank of you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Y'all let's stand up if yes. you would. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that today, we pray that today minister to you. There's a lot to learn about mercy. I encourage you to go and do your own study on mercy and begin to apply that in your life. And remember, those, those that give out mercy will receive mercy. That's, That's right. what the Beatitudes have said. And, and I'm, I'm telling you, then when you apply mercy, then it's easier to be a person of grace as well. Amen. Hallelujah. If our prayer ministers will come on down. We want to make sure, we never want to end a service ever without making sure that everyone knows Jesus. And had the opportunity to receive Jesus. As our Lord and Savior. Yes. Some of y'all come on down on this side. We, Be good. Rodney and Vicki, y'all come on over on this side if you would. And y'all scoot on down this way. We got lots of prayer ministers. That's awesome. Y'all yeah. scoot on down. There you go. Hallelujah. Thanks. So we want to make sure that everybody knows Jesus as their Lord and Savior. If you are either watching online or you are in this room in this sanctuary and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please come down and allow our prayer ministers to pray with you. Maybe if you've lived your life for the Lord, but you haven't been living your life for the Lord now, you want to make sure that your life is right with Jesus. 
maybe you need to come down and be prayed for as well or call us on 404-697-5215. Also, if you haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, man, that's where the power is. That's where the power is. You want to operate in the power of God and the anointing of God to be able to utilize mercy in your life and, and grace? Then you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Does it mean you're any more saved than someone who doesn't? No. But it just helps you live on this earth a whole lot better. Yeah. You got the power. It helps you have the power. Yes. So I encourage you, if you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, if you're in this room, please come down and let our prayer ministers pray with you. Or if you're watching online, again, you can call us at 404-697-5215. I tell you what, y'all. When you stop and you think about all that Jesus has done and the mercy his very life was and what he did for us. And again, it's not that it was easy for him to do. I think that's why that scripture was put in the Bible where he said, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. I don't want to do this. His soul was speaking out. I don't want to do this. But then his spirit man came out and said, no, nevertheless, not my will. But I'm getting ready to operate in the greatest gift of mercy that there ever was or ever will be. For mankind. For mankind. So in the flesh, Jesus himself bore all of this with the greatest mercy you'll ever know. And he said, their sins and their lawless deeds, I will remember no more. When he sees you, he sees you cleansed through the blood that he shed. Hallelujah. Like I said, next week, then we'll get to talk about grace. It's going to be so exciting. The God of all grace will be the message for next week. But he teaches us in his word how, as he is, so are we in this world. He teaches us in his word how we can operate in those gifts. That's right. But it comes through our spirit. And living through our spirit, man. So exciting. So exciting. And you know what? When you, ex when you extend mercy, just like my grandfather did to that criminal and that thief, man, what joy comes all over you. Again, it's that sowing and reaping. Merciful is he to those who show mercy. This week, let's operate in some mercy out there. With anybody you come in contact with, there's going to be plenty. Hey, there's always plenty of opportunity to show mercy. Always. And you ask God every morning, Lord, help me operate in mercy today. <laughs> and whatever happens that I will be one who operates in mercy because as he is, so am I. As he is, so am I. Wow. Precious. Now, Jessica, that's perfect music. Perfect anointed music. So sweet. You know, if y'all have any other needs, please come on down and let the prayer ministers pray with you. We want to go ahead and say goodbye to Livestream. Livestream, thank you so much for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you next week. Same time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, U.S. Time, the Solid Rock of Atlanta. Glad you joined us today. From Have wherever in the world you're watching from. Right. Have a blessed week. We love you. Love you. Hallelujah.